Alright, so tomorrow is your first AP Physics quiz. Uh, you might be a little scared, and if you're not, you should be. So I'm going to talk to you about the best way to study for AP Physics quizzes in general, and specifically about how to study for this one. First, the best way to study for any of my quizzes is to go to our website, pumaphysics.wordpress.com. Because you may have noticed that at the end of most of the posts, I include these extra practice items. Now the point of those, right here, is for you to go back and look at them. Some of them are just the PowerPoints I used in the videos. Others are homework sheets or what would be homework sheets, but basically just practice problems for you to work on. And what you should do is try a few practice problems from each of the sheets that I've uploaded. I'm not saying go do this entire sheet and then go do this entire sheet. I'm saying try a couple problems from each one. And if you have trouble with something, call a friend, call me, watch a video again, do it until you can get it right. And honestly, that is going to be the best way to study because when creating those worksheets, they were aligned to the quizzes I'm going to give you. So the level of question on those worksheets is only a little under what I'm giving you on the quizzes. So the quizzes are a little harder than those worksheets, but they're very, very close. And if you can do those worksheets and you've been successful with the problems you've done in class, you'll be just fine. All right, for the this specific quiz, there are four main things you need to know. Algebra. That's uh, summer homework. If you can do it, you're fine. There's a question that was on your summer homework that's also on this quiz. I'll do one example of algebra that you'll need to know to help you out. Converting metric units. That King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk thing on the quiz tomorrow. So I'll go over that really quickly in this PowerPoint. Converting between metric and English units. Now, I just checked with another AP physics teacher. Turns out you have to memorize the English to metric conversions for the AP test. Yes, I wish I had known that two videos ago. So sorry, I'm going to put those facts up for you. There are only four or five of them, but you do have to memorize them for both the quiz tomorrow and the AP physics test. For graphical analysis, sounds like a scary word. That means being able to make a graph, do a best fit line, find the slope of the best fit line. If you can do those things, you're golden on that part. All right, so we're going to do one quick example of each of these. Remember, there are practice sheets for most of this stuff on my website, so if you need more work on it, feel free to run to those. Okay, the first thing you need to know is algebra. I do apologize for my handwriting on this equation. This is red beta equals mu naught i over 2 pi r. Mu naught is one thing, by the way, so it's not mu times zero. By the way, beta and mu are both Greek letters, so is pi. Take this equation and solve for r. I want you to pause the video, pause the video, find r in that equation, and come back. All right, so we're taking this equation and solving for r. That means I've got to get r by itself. So first thing, I obviously want to get r out of the bottom of this equation. So I'm going to take that equation and multiply it both sides or the whole equation. Just doing this for shortcut, so I'm multiplying both sides by r. That leaves me with r beta, so that's r times beta, by the way, equals mu naught i over 2 pi. Okay, and now to get r by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by beta. And that equals r equals beta mu naught. Whoops. See what I did there? When I divided that equation by beta, for some reason, I put that on the top. 
and I should not have done that. So that was my mistake. Uh, I decided not to remake this slide after making that mistake, actually, because I think it's good for you to see me making mistakes and then watch me correct them. So I'm going to correct this in red. This part is wrong. Notice how I did not scribble through that. I just drew a line indicating it is incorrect. Now I'm going to write the correct answer. R equals mu naught i over 2 pi beta. And that is my answer. So, if you did not get that correct, stop now. Figure out where your mistake was. Call somebody. Call me. You got a note for the quiz tomorrow. All right. Next up, I want you to try a slightly harder equation. This is the equation for electric fields. It's red. E equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Q1 is one thing. Q2 is another thing. Not Q times 1. Not Q1, Q2. K times Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared. Pause the video. Try that one. So, oh, sorry. You don't know what you're trying. Solve for R. Pause the video. Solve for R. All right, so I'm solving for r. This is going to be a pretty similar process. First, let's just take the equation. Okay, q1, q2, over r squared. If you're asking yourself, should I know what this equation means? The answer is no. You will find out later this year. Right now, you do need to be able to do the algebra with it. And I'm trying to solve for r. Now note, not solving for r squared, my answer should not be r squared equals something. It should be r equals something. So similar to last time, I'm going to multiply both sides of that equation. And note that to indicate multiplying both sides, I just put the whole thing in parentheses. If it makes you more comfortable to write times r squared on both sides, that's fine. All right, now that I've done that, I end up with e r squared equals k q1 q2. All right, now I've got to get r by itself. So divide by e on both sides. r squared equals k q1 q2 over e. Now, most people tend to stop here. So I'm going to do the rest of this in a different color to indicate that it is correct but I'm doing it in a different color because most people stop and think that they've got the right answer now. This is not the correct answer. I have r squared equals something. The question was solve for r. So I still have to take the square root of both sides. And once I've done that, I've got r equals the square root of k, q1, q2. Over e. And this is my final answer. If you got that wrong, figure out where you made a mistake. Call somebody. Do practice problems. Get it until it's perfect. All right, the next part is metric conversion. For this, the easiest, and I do mean easiest way, is just to memorize that phrase, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. And then as soon as you get a quiz, a test, anything in physics, on your paper, just no matter what it's about, go. Okay? And so you can just do metric conversions in your sleep. Write that down. It's going to help you so much. So as soon as you get your paper tomorrow, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Trust me, if you don't, you'll regret it. So write that down on your paper as soon as you get it. What I want you to do is convert 50 centimeters to meters, millimeters, and kilometers. Now, I encourage you to write down this question and go away from the computer after you pause the video because if you stay near the computer, you're going to be tempted to look at this. So even if you write down the question, go away from the computer and then immediately write KHDBDCM. That's fine. You've just gotten to get in the habit. I put this here as a reminder. It will not be on the test tomorrow. Be careful. So. Go somewhere else and convert 50 centimeters to meters, millimeters, kilometers. Come back when you're done. I'll give you the answers. All right. I hope you did what I said. 
Let's convert from centimeters to meters. Now, I've already written KHDBDCM, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk on my paper. So I can do centimeters, and I'm going to meters, but it's not this M. That's wrong. That's milla. Meters is a base. So I'm going from the C to the B, which is one, two steps. And now if I take the 50 centimeters, five, zero, Remember, if there is no decimal, you put one at the end. You don't want to put it before, you don't put it in the middle, you put it at the end. I'm going to go one, two steps. So now I can say 50 centimeters is 0 0.5 meters. At this point in the year, don't worry about if you should have another zero after that five. Um, there was one originally, so if you do that, that's okay. Not too much of a concern. 0 0.5 or 0 0.50 meters are both acceptable. They are the same number. All right, if you need to pause that to take notes, do so. I'm going to clear this off and do the next one. All right, now we're doing millimeters. So we're going from centa to milla. Notice I move 1 to the right. So I'll take 5, 0. Put the decimal since there is none. Move 1 to the right. There's no 0, no number where I'm moving. So I'll put one here. Now I know that 50 centimeters equals 500 millimeters. I'm realizing that I may not have been super explicit about abbreviations. Little m by itself means meters. And then these letters right here, KHDBDCM, in front of something mean their prefix. So CM is centimeters. Little dm is decimeters, big dm is decameters, h is hectometers, km is kilometers. Sorry if that was not super clear. All right, moving on to the next one, so pause if you need to. All right, now we're going from centimeters to kilometers. This is going to be difficult. I'm also most likely to mess up on this one. Let's try it, though. So I move one, two, three, four, five places to the left. Now I need to take my five, zero, and move one, two, three, four, five places to the left. That means the decimal is now here. I've got zero, zero, zero. So that tells me that 50 centimeters equals, now I'm going to put a zero in front of the decimal just because that makes things cleaner. It's very clear to me that you didn't just make a spec on your paper. That is zero point something. Zero, 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 five, zero centimeters. You should check me on that. That was a long one. I could have messed up. Make sure I'm right. And now moving on. All right, here's the toughest part of studying, and part of it's my fault. I really thought that you would have these metric conversions, or sorry, these English to metric conversions on the uh, AP exam, found out today you do not. So you must memorize these. I think that's terrible. I hate memorizing things. I did really poorly in college chemistry because I refused to memorize things. If you want to succeed on the quiz tomorrow and on the AP exam, and you know, based on all those things we wrote that one day on life, then you have got to, got to, Got to, got to, got to, got to memorize that information right there. Go write it down 20 times. Go make flashcards. Go have your parents ask you a million times those numbers. You must memorize those. If there were any way around it, I would take it. I hate memorizing things. I'm not sure I could say all of those to you if you just came up and asked me. I'd have to look. The AP test, you got to have it. You got to do it. And for me to not have you memorize those would be terrible and would hurt you on the AP test. So I'm going to walk through them once and clear the slide. Clear it just for people who are distracted by all the yellow, as pretty as it is. All right, one in inch equals 2.54 centimeters. One foot equals 12 inches. I hope you already know that one. Pretty common. One mile equals 1,600 meters. One mile equals 5,280 feet. One yard equals three feet. My encouragement to you, memorize this list. 
when you get your quiz tomorrow, in addition to writing KHD, BDCM, write this down before looking at any questions, and you just have it, and you won't have to think about it. Because in the middle of trying to answer a question on a timed quiz, you are going to freak yourself out. So, write that down immediately, write down KHD, BDCM. And by the way, I'm serious, and sorry. Do whatever it takes to memorize that list. Tonight. Good luck. Godspeed. All right, final topic, graphical analysis. I'm not going to put anything on this slide. I am, however, going to explain to you the perfect way to study. Right after all the groups drew their graphs today in class, I took pictures of them and should have posted them to the website by now. So part of this post should be those graphs. What you should do is check everyone's slope. So whether they wrote it on there or not, if they wrote it, cover it up with your hand, find the slope of their line, see if you got the same thing they got. If you didn't, figure out what you did wrong, what they did wrong. So basically I'm asking you, no, telling you, go through and check each group's slope. Make sure they are right. And then tomorrow, if they're wrong, let them know. Also, you need to know how to do that. You need to know how to graph, how to find a best fit line, and how to find a slope. There might be a reason I'm pointing mostly to slope, all right? Go check all their slopes. Check them all. Calculate them. Don't just look and say that looks right. Calculate the slopes on every group's graph. Confirm they're right. They could be wrong. Let them know tomorrow if they are. All right, you've got your four things that you have to study. Algebra, converting metric units, converting between metric and English units, which you sadly have to memorize, and graphical analysis. Go check their slopes. That's all. Good luck on your first quiz.